during the upcoming climate change negotiations in Copenhagen this December, developing nations will be asking for more generous and more reliable funding for adaptation projects. Poor countries will likely be the most affected by the impacts of climate change and least able to cope with them. In September, I hiked for 21 days into northern Bhutan to see how the tiny Himalayan nation is dealing with a warming world. The landscape of northern Bhutan is peppered with glaciers, but the glaciers are retreating rapidly and experts say they could disappear completely by 2035. The silt and boulders pushed aside by the glaciers form natural dams that hold in meltwater. Some of these dams have given way to produce deadly and destructive floods in the river valleys, where most of Bhutan's population lives. Dawa Gyelchen is a local yak herder. He invited me into his home, and over a cup of salty butter tea, told me how the fields in front of his house were washed away by the last flood. My final destination was the Tortomi Glacier near the border with Tibet. I climbed to the top of the dam at the foot of the glacier and saw for myself how quickly the glacier is melting. As more ice melts, pressure is building up behind the dam. Scientists are worried that it could soon collapse, unleashing a torrent of water from Tortomi into Rapstring Lake to its west and on into the valley below. Karma Tib is leading a project to reduce the pressure on the dam and prevent a catastrophic flood. In the outlet from the melting glacier, hundreds of Bhutanese laborers scrape away boulders and stones to deepen the outlet and increase drainage. The project's aim is to lower Tortomi's waters by 1.67 meters every year, but they're running behind. The team's crude measuring stick shows that after the first year, they've only managed around 90 centimeters. Bhutan is a bit of a pioneer in terms of adaptation projects. As a follower of the Buddhist tenet of non-extremism, the monarchy has prioritized economic development but not at the expense of the country's natural environment and cultural traditions. Whereas many developing countries have struggled to get funding for their projects, Bhutan was the first country to get money from a special United Nations fund for adaptation projects in the developing world. But even after $7.4 million of investment, the project is only dealing with one of the country's almost 3,000 glacial lakes. Floods are only the tip of the iceberg in terms of the consequences of melting glaciers. With all the water and ice I saw on my trip, it's hard to imagine water shortages here. But if the Himalayan glaciers disappear, it will affect the water supply of around 750 million people in Bhutan and the rest of Asia.